I think there are many barriers, particularly from a proliferation of different players in the landscape um, and, and the overall change in the video landscape. Right? Like traditional television has continued to plummet. Right? We are now have prime ratings that are under a one from a C3 perspective. And even among adults 35 to 54, right, what, what used to be the sweet spot for linear TV has now been accelerated into VOD and, and into over the top. And, and that will only continue. Right? When I look at my children in my house, they think of television as something different. They think of television as a screen that has content to me that I stream from all kinds of places. And so from a measurement perspective, aligning on what are the right metrics, because uh, a CPM or an old GRP are somewhat outdated as they were age sex based. And so we have to move to models that go to business outcomes and are cross channel in nature and can handle what is online video, whether that is on a direct to publisher side outside of the big two, and then also handling what happens inside Facebook and inside YouTube where right, more than half of all video viewing in mobile happens these days. And then kind of how do you align the mobile channel, um, traditional PC, Mac, um, as well as all the over-the-top uh, devices, ensuring that uh, you can measure both branding as well as performance that comes out at the end. And you know, little things like if you're in a perform, if you're a performance marketer and you're very concerned about the click-through, and do I have my conversion online, and you're looking at cost per outcome models, uh, right? Some um, some devices aren't geared to that, right? They don't even allow you to click on something. So then, how do you how do you measure that? And I think uh, good news though is that we've made lots of advances in that space. Uh, I've spent my entire career um, running analytics on understanding the impact of pricing as well as the impact on media and marketing, advertising on sales. So we have a very good understanding of how different channels, how different message strategies, how different uh, creatives, um, and most importantly, different audiences react to the advertising exposure. I mean, the current state is very, right, you, you, you have a crystallization of a couple of different players that are really vying for the big prize. Um, so you have Apple now moving in with, with their TV offering. You have, um, you have the Netflixes of the world. Then obviously you have Disney who's big, um, both from a live sports and also their entertainment properties and their movies that they have. And then you have the right the AT and T's, the Comscores with NBC, and and I think there'll be currently there are like six, seven companies, and obviously Amazon as well, um, that are investing a lot in content, that are trying to um, get all the subscriptions into their streaming services, um, and compete for all the different eyeballs. I, I think a challenge will be like, are, are there is there really room for six of them, or will there only be two or three? Um, I think so we'll see lots of consolidation moving forward um, and also um, is there is there you know when is when is signing up for another ten dollar a month streaming service where's the end of that um, you know and, and where does a bundler a traditional bundling come back because it's just more convenient to a consumer and um, yeah it'll be an exciting ride over the next couple of years it's an outcome based um, is the silver bullet which is an alignment is, is where it all gets normalized is back to a dollar, right? How much money did I spend and how much money did it return for me from a business perspective? And I think that is the big normalizer. Um, having more media driven metrics is tricky, right? There's the, the Coalition for Innovative Media Measurement and others are doing great work in coming up with cross channel metrics and that work across all the different channels. Um, but it's tricky, right? You have Viewability is different. Um, the, the whole issue of digital video and viewability, you know, some channels are higher, right? Like YouTube tends to be upward of 90% based on their own measurement. Um, then, and then others are, we've recently actually done very interesting studies in our IPG lab where we had looked at um, linear television viewability and how much do people actually uh, watch. And it was interestingly somewhere in the 75% of television the linear television viewing was only viewable and but overall these metrics that's becoming interesting i think we've made a lot of advances as well in 
the areas of marketing mix modeling as well as television attribution to really look at short-term impacts uh, onto sales or other outcomes along the purchase funnel. And, and, and those have advanced. Uh, on the other hand, we're, I think we're beginning to be on the, on the cusp of really bringing true science to advertising uh, in a sense of the scientific method. So bringing um, randomized control and test control approaches to it in the form of predicted ghost ads, which have been piloted in a couple of different DSPs, also Google, DataXoo, and others have, everyone is trying to like really get that going. Um, and it is gonna work for online video and it's gonna work for over the top. And, uh, and that brings like an ability to have uh, the targeting algorithms that are innate to bidding platforms into the measurement of a test control group um, to ensure symmetric experiments so you can then actually have an exposed group, non-exposed group, and you can know that the algorithm would have targeted the control group as well, but then not let the bidding algorithms get in the way of, of muddying, muddying up the waters and um, eliminating the need to buy public service announcements who also have their own issues in terms of symmetry. Um, but I think it is time for, for the advertising industry to have that in a scalable manner across all channels. And that will eventually be that, that silver bullet.